So I'm at the point in the career where I am preparing for the instrument or the IFR check ride, which I do have an IFR or an instrument rating in real life. And I thought for fun and to share with you guys, I would do the VOR lesson because that's an area where a lot of people, both in the real world and probably in flight sim, tend to have uh, some challenges. So let's dive into it and uh, we'll go through this together. Now that you have the basics of flying the aircraft on instruments, let's look at navigation. There is a worldwide network of radio beacons that pilots use to find their way when flying IFR. The most common beacon is the VOR. I've tuned the Sumberg VOR into your NAV radio, which we're going to fly toward. To get there, we'll use the course deviation indicator, CDI. That's the green arrow and bar on the HSI. I've set the CDI for a course of 170. That means we want to arrive at the VOR on a heading of 170. The CDI shows us if we are on our selected course. If the bar is to the left of center, we need to fly to the left to recapture our course. The bar is currently over to the right, so keep flying on this heading and wait for the CDI bar to start moving towards the middle. Okay, so when you're doing this in a real airplane, as you can see right now, I'm on autopilot. We're in heading mode. I have an altitude hold at uh, 3,880 feet. So what he's talking about is this is the CDI line that's going to move and we want to intercept this and then we want to, once this lines up here with the rest of it, we want to turn and fly inbound on that radial. Now when you're in a plane that has the appropriate instrumentation, you can, even though you're in heading mode, you can go ahead and arm your nav mode by clicking nav and the VOR is going to be white. What that means is that the VOR is armed and ready to intercept the uh, radial that we're looking Here at. Which it comes. Now and we there we go. Turn onto heading so you can see now it's gone into VOR mode because it's captured it. The autopilot, and this is exactly how it works in a real aircraft, the autopilot is now going to steer us such that this line will get centered here and we will head directly inbound on the 170 radial of the station. Now the frequency Great. here now keep the CDI bar centered and it'll take us to the VOR is 117.35 and this is something that I do with my students on a regular basis when we're learning VORs. I'll get them to tune in the uh, Boise VOR, which I believe is 113.3, and then I'll get them to choose a random radial, and then we'll fly towards that radial, radial exactly as you saw here, and then we'll go ahead and do the intercept. So we're getting close to the VOR now. The CDI indications might become erratic or disappear when reaching a VOR, but this is normal. Keep flying straight ahead on heading 170 for a couple miles. So what he's talking about is the VOR cone of confusion, and that is when you're directly above the VOR, as we are right now, the VOR has difficulty there, we're directly above it. The VOR has difficulty knowing what radial you're on until such time as you fly past it. So here you can see we're continuing to move on past. And as we do get further away from the station, the needle in the middle, middle moves back towards center. And now we're going to be flying outbound on the radial that we are on. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. <laughs> I don't know why he thinks I need more practice. <laughs> Let's see how we scored on that. 
considering the autopilot did all the work. That is pretty funny. Flying to the VOR and I used the autopilot to get there. It scored us only at 32%. Not entirely sure why that is. So I'm going to go ahead and refly it and we'll do it manually just using the heading indicator to steer us. So I'll show you what I mean. And this is something that you can also do in a real aircraft. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arm ALT. I'm going to arm the heading and I'm going to the autopilot. On Let's look at navigation. There is a worldwide network of radio beacons that pilots use to find their way when flying IFR. The most common beacon is the VOR. I've tuned the Sumberg VOR into your NAV radio, which we're going to fly toward. To get there, we'll use the course deviation indicator, CDI. That's the green arrow and bar on the HSI. I've set the CDI for a course of 170. That means we want to arrive at the VOR on a heading of 170. The CDI shows us if we are on our selected course. If the bar is to the left of center, we need to fly to the left to recapture our course. The bar is currently over to the right, so keep flying on this heading and wait for the CDI bar to start moving towards the middle. So this time, rather than use navigation mode on our autopilot, I'm simply going to spin the heading knob as we start to intercept this and we'll use the heading knob to adjust our heading so that this bar here remains right dead center and we'll see how our score compares to the autopilot doing it. Now in a real aircraft the autopilot will do a remarkable job of doing it so what I'm about to demonstrate now is not something that you would generally do if you want to track a radial inbound or outbound. You're going to tune in the station here in the nav. You're going to choose whatever radial you want. We're using this knob right here you can see 169, 170 and then uh, you're going to put it in nav mode and it's going to do a very fine job of flying you inbound here it or comes. outbound. Now make a left turn onto heading 170. So here's our left turn. And we're just trying to time the rate of our turn so that we get the bar fully centered by the time we turn to 170. And there's the bar. Great. Now keep the CDI up. bar centered and it'll take us to the VOR. So now all we're going to do is if that CDI bar moves this way, we're going to use the heading knob to turn to the right. If it moves this way, we're going to use the heading knob to turn to the left. So the bar is ever so slightly to the right, so I have turned right now to 173 in an effort to recapture it. And how it can be, what can be happening here is we can have a crosswind, which is now blowing our aircraft to the left. And so we are compensating for that by adjusting our heading to the right, which is also something that would very much happen in the real world. And that's the reason why you would use navigation mode to track the radial inbound is because you don't have to do what I'm doing right now. We're getting close to the VOR now. The CDI indications might become erratic or disappear when reaching a VOR, but this is normal. Keep flying straight ahead on heading 170 for a couple miles. Which is what we'll do. We're now heading 170. This is the entering the cone of confusion phase. You can see on the MFD here and we're passing over the same spot on the airport that we were at before. And there is our course needle coming back towards center as we get further from the station. If it stops to mo moving, I'm going to turn back right to intercept and center the course needle. And then we're going to turn back left again to a heading of 170, which matches, matches the course that we're looking for and 
the CDI needle is now staying nice and centered. A little turn back to the right needed for potentially wow, what is a crosswind. Now we'll turn our attention to a different type of radio beacon. All right, let's see how we did on that one. Fly the VOR, 82%. Well, I don't know how uh, we could do much better than that, but there you go. That's a little quick lesson for you on how you can use your navigation mode of your autopilot to track a VOR radio, or if you want to do it manually with your heading bug, you can do that as well. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please do leave me a comment or question below and smash that like button. And if you'd like to see f further videos like this in the future from my channel, go ahead and consider becoming a subscriber. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.